What is up YouTube? I'm here and I'm back with another video. My last video I talked about real estate, personal finance, investing, and other business topics. But I'm gonna be switching gears and I'm gonna be talking about the tech industry. And I know on here all the time, every intro, I tell you guys, I talk about personal finance, investing, tech industry, and lifestyle, but I'm more so been focusing on the business and the business aspect and the finance portion of my channel. But I'm gonna be switching gears and I'm gonna be telling you guys how the tech industry changed my life. There is gonna be portions of finance that is including here, but I just wanna share, um, share my journey on how the tech industry just really changed my life and changed the trajectory of my life as well too. If you're new here, my name is Taeyong Tech. On my page, I like to talk about personal finance, investing, tech, see, <laughs> and lifestyle. So before I just really dive into how the tech industry changed my life, I do want to give a background of who I am, where I come from, and just all those great things so that you guys can see like just how attainable landing a job in the tech industry and how you can also like have the lifestyle that you really want to have through the usage of the tech industry. Again, if you guys follow me, you know I come from a single family household. I was raised by my mother. Um, I don't come from money whatsoever. My mom worked two jobs. Um, I went to a public institution or a public high school, which typically they didn't really care about the education there. Um, I wasn't introduced into the tech industry until I was like a sophomore year in college. Um, I didn't have any mentorship. I didn't have any guidance. I didn't really have a father figure around whatsoever. So literally everything I did, I I got it out the mud. And with me saying that I got it out the mud, it is not me gloating that whatsoever. I never really understood why people feel like struggling is a flex because it's not. I would definitely very much so wish that I had some type of help um, in my journey of where I'm at now, or even just some guidance, or, you know, I really wish I had help. And you know, we see on social media that people glorify this and they're trying to shame people that had uh, like had parents that was pretty much well off, made great money, made great financial decisions for them. But you know, for the people that didn't um, have that, you know, at, ultimately it's up to us to make the right decisions for our life to live the life that we want to live. Um, even though you may not have all those great things, at the end of the day, it is your responsibility to educate yourself on what's possible out there in the world. Like for instance, there was no financial literacy for me growing up. We was living paycheck to paycheck. So when you're living paycheck to paycheck, there's no investing. There's no like, oh, hey, let's go randomly do this. Like there, at that point, you're trying to make me, um, ends meet. You're, all the money that you're making is going towards the bills and you're setting a little bit aside for your birthdays and you know Christmas and like those holiday or those family dinners. So I mean, overall, I never went without. Like I'm never, I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, like my lights got cut off or I didn't have any water. Um, that wasn't my situation. So I was never in a situation that bad. But again, we still live paycheck to paycheck. My mom made um, ends meet, but she also was working two jobs for that. So with me kind of giving you guys that background, you kind of get where I'm coming from and what type of background that I had. I did have help along the way um, once I really just trying to start networking with people and all those great things. So I'm not going to just sit here and say I had no help, no one helped me out, I did everything on my own. Because at the end of the day, if you see any success in life, you had some help. I don't care, I don't care what you say, you had some type of help. And I was really bad about that um, when I was growing up. I was like, oh, I don't need anyone help. I don't need this, I don't need friends, I don't need that. Yes, you do. If you're trying to live the lifestyle that you really honestly wanna have, you need help. <laughs> I don't care, like, you, you need help. <laughs> so stop being so proper, guys, and take the help. Ask for help when you need it. Um, but I'm just gonna kinda start off from here. Um, my first time with me really just getting introduc uh, introduced into the tech industry was my sophomore year of college. Um, that's when everything just kind of like took place. I changed my major to this. And also, side note, 
you do not need a college degree whatsoever. I actually almost contemplated not finishing school because I was already receiving job offers. But my mom was like, Terry, you only got this many semesters. You need to go ahead and finish school. So I did it for my mom. I did it for you, mom. Any other time, if she was not there and telling me to go to school, I promise y'all I would not have finished. And I had already received multiple job offers. And this was like while I was in junior college. So yeah, or community college. But yeah, so um, my sophomore year, um, I had received my first internship offer making $33 an hour or almost $70,000 per year. And you gotta think about this. I come from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Like 68, 70,000 $70, dollars. People that was getting their four year degree, people that was getting their MBAs and that was going to go be retail managers or whatever they was doing, they wasn't even making this type of money. So you mean to tell me I'm two years into college or two and a half years into college and I'm already receiving $70,000 internship offers? In my head, I'm just thinking, I'm like, so if the internship offers are like this, what the full-time offers look like? So, so and, and the thing about this is, once I started making that type of money, like, you gotta think about this, I'm in college, my rent is like $600, my car note is like $250, my car insurance like $150. So all in all, I'm maybe spending $1,000 if that per month. And this is me being generous, like, like bills that I absolutely need to pay, all in all, it's probably like $900 to $1,000 per month. But yeah, like at that point, I'm making all of this money. I've never seen this before. Now I'm starting to learn how to invest. I'm like, I have all this money left over. Let me start putting it somewhere where I can learn how to invest or actually just really, you know, put my money so I can start having my money, make my own money. And that's when the financial literacy portion of things start to really just kick in. I'm still an intern, I'm still in school, but I'm making all this money. Let me find a way to put it somewhere and let it work for me. And that's what I started doing. And so it kind of fast forward. Um, and also, I was doing this all throughout college. So I was getting internships that was paying me 30, 40, 45, like my highest paying internship, I was gonna pay $45 an hour and they gave me a $10,000 sign on bonus. Like, bro, like I literally had through my entire sign on bonus into Bitcoin. And this was around like 2018 sometime, 2017, 2018. So I'm just like, dump it in there. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, it was really crazy. I was really making like a ton of money during this time. And I was just throwing all this money into investments. Like I, like, I didn't have no responsibility. My bills were dirt cheap. So at this time, I, it was really a time for me to really learn how to invest. Like, and I know like, you know, by me saying this, I was fortunate enough to be able to do this, but I was able to like really learn how to invest because I wasn't really scared to, uh, scared of losing money because I'm like, I'm making all this money, I'm having the bills, I'm having responsibilities. So this is really my time to really learn how to invest and learn what works and what don't work. Again, I don't even advise you guys to just go blindly into the stock market or, you know, cryptocurrency and just don't really learn it and just throw money in there because that's what I was doing. But I, I was just like a hard-headed individual when I was doing stuff like that. I mean, anywho, fast forward to when I land my very first full-time job, making about $110,000 per year. Again, I'm like, wow, I'm making all of this money. Like, I'm 21 years old and I'm making $110,000 per year. Again, bro, like, in my head, I'm just like mind blown because if I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, like I, I probably keep telling you guys this, but I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. The mo if I would have stayed there, literally like the most I have probably would have been, would have been maybe a Geek Squad manager or something like that. Like I, I don't really, I didn't really see much for myself. And I know a lot of people, when I ask people like, oh, like, you know, maybe 10 years ago, um, would you have imagined yourself being in a position that you're in now? And I'm truthful and I tell people this all the time. No, I, there was no, like, I didn't know anything about the tech industry. I hadn't planned on doing anything in tech. Like, when I was younger, I was gonna be a lawyer, doctor, astronaut. But like, I guess like life and stuff really just started kicking in. Like people around me, I didn't really have anyone that was really just in like corporate America. Uh, most of the people that were around me was working like retail. Um, they maybe had a small business, but that business wasn't really a selling. 
it was just like, oh, like I have a business. Like, okay, cool, you have a hobby. It wasn't really a business, but cool, it is what it is. But and think about those businesses, they wouldn't even run the business correct. They was literally running them as a hobby. And that's why I was like, that's not a business, bro. That's that's a hobby. There's no incorporation, there's no nothing. You're literally just doing side jobs and making money. And that's everything that I was seeing outside of like the drug dealing. So it's just like, wow, bro, like I'm making all of this money and I'm making it legit. And I know people that's probably sitting there thinking like, oh, $110,000 is not that much. That's a lot of money. I don't care. No one say, uh, like you have everyone that's on social media and oh, six figures, not that much money. The six figures, $100,000 is a lot of money, especially if you know how to live within your means. And that's when the financial literacy aspect of things. So I'm not going to lie. When I did start making this money, I did have a lifestyle creep. Like I started spending money like crazy, but also I was investing like crazy. So it really didn't matter. Like my bills all in all at this time, I had got a new apartment. All my bills all together was like $2,000 or something like that. But I was still making like eight, nine $9,000 per month. So it didn't matter. <laughs> I was making a ton of, a ton of money. And so this also goes to another aspect of like how the tech industry changed my life. When you get to the tech industry, you automatically just become this great investor. Well, no, I'm not okay, my fault. You don't automatically become this great investor, but you typically, you go into the route of becoming a great investor. And the reason why I say that is, once you get into the tech industry, then you start getting compensation packages where you can equity, sign up bonuses, performing bonuses, and all those great things. And so with you getting equity into a company, this forces you to do research in the company. You want to see the financials. You want to see the product that this um, company is doing. You want to look at the outlook, what are they planning on doing in the future. Like you really start, you know, trying to see exactly is this a good buy-in for this company. If you join this company and they give you a certain amount of stock, will this stock be worth more money in the future? And if you feel like that, then cool, you go for it. And I'm not going to lie, like me getting to the tech industry, it made me a great investor. Um, just because I was always keeping up with the trends, I was always keeping up the new products within these tech companies. I was keeping up these IPOs. I was looking at, you know, business financials. I was looking at all these great things because my thing is, if I want to go to a company and they're going to offer me equity, I want to make sure that I can make money off this company as the company grows. And that helps, that carried me, they helped me with trading stocks. Um, again, if you guys follow me on social media, you know, at one time, uh, one point in time, I was a day, I was day trading, um, heavily day trading Tesla, Facebook, Microsoft. Like I was pretty much always been into like the tech stocks. Like even now my portfolio is all tech stocks. And for the most part, it's like tech stocks. That's probably not even profitable right now, but within the next five, 10 years, it's gonna be amazing companies. And I bought in extremely early. So that's gonna skyrocket. And then with you, like just overall, just becoming like that great investor. Now you're going to different avenues. You're making all this different type of money. Now you haven't, you can go invest into real estate. Now you go into like private equity if you choose to. You can go into stocks, you can go into cryptocurrency. You can just go into all these different avenues because at this point you have all this money that you're making and it's just like, oh wow, I need to find some different ways to make my money work for me. And it's just amazing, like safeness. And then this is the biggest thing that I always see people talking about. Like, you know, nowadays in social media, you always have people, individuals that's down in nine to five jobs. And when it comes to the tech industry, I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you, right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. Y'all talk down about the nine to fives all you want to, but when it comes to the tech industry, we are not those nine to five. I sit here, I make six figures and I work from home. I pretty much make my own schedule and I work maybe four or five hours a day, if that, like honestly, if there's nothing just really on fire, I'm not really doing too much work. What job you know is gonna make you a millionaire? I'm telling you, the tech industry will literally make you a millionaire and it has made multiple people a millionaire. I mean, is it likely that it's always gonna happen? No, but again, that comes to play to you being like how the tech industry turns you to a great investor if you start doing the right way. There are so many startups out here or um, unicorn companies that people or people in the tech industry, they purposely go wreck at these companies right before they start to go IPO or they believe exactly what they're doing and they get all this equity in this company. And when this company finally files for IPO and go, um, go public, the stock shoots up and now they're becoming millionaires. It's been so many stories where people from Uber, people from Airbnb, DoorDash, like all these big companies, all these great companies, like a lot of their employees end up becoming millionaires 
because of the growth in their stock. And I mean, is that gonna happen all the time? Probably not. But the way these companies give you all this stock, like literally Facebook gives people like a quarter million dollars in stock. I mean, you gotta be a great engineer. But when you get into like these companies early, and you really have the opportunity and not only can you potentially become a millionaire in that type of level of getting equity into a company but then you also get to the point where now you can take the extra income and invest into real estate and all these different avenues and investments that you can do like say for instance you go from a job where you was only making forty thousand dollars per year and now you come up to a tech job where now you're making ninety thousand dollars per year you got a fifty thousand dollar extra income that you can take and go invest now and not to mention in the tech industry they usually give you sign on bonuses and every sign on bonus i've had has been at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars like i always ask for sign on bonuses and i'll make another video telling you guys how you can actually negotiate your salaries and how you can get bigger sign on bonuses if you guys are interested in that comment below and i'll make sure i do that but um, also, yeah, like whenever you, you taking all that money and you're going to different avenues, like real estate is like the way most people become millionaires by networking. And you tell me if you're taking $50,000 per year to go buy property and then think about this, nowadays you go buy properties for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And my thing is that, I mean, obviously, of course, those are probably going to be like lower tier cities like Detroit, Cleveland, Mississippi, probably Louisiana or whatever. Like it's gonna be states I mean, places like that, but still you're growing your portfolio and as you gain equity into those particular houses or you know, rental properties, then you're pulling that equity into that and you're gonna go buy a different, I mean, going to go invest in different um, real estate properties or uh, different um, other investment opportunities. Like literally, like when I tell you people like the tech industry changed my life, it allowed me to go invest in different um, areas that I wasn't familiar with before. It forced me to learn all these different aspects of things when it comes to investing because I have all this disposable income to sit there and try to do those things. So um, this comes to like probably like the final topic. Um, you forever have a job. Like regular in the tech industry, I kid you not, bro, you're gonna always have a job. No matter what you say, no matter what happens, you're gonna always have a job. And the reason why I say that is because it, technology is steadily advancing every day. Like there's some new cyber attack, there's some new technology, there's some new product, there's, everything's connected to the internet. So you're gonna always have a job, especially in cybersecurity. Uh, prime example, like when Kobe hit and everything, all these crazy things would happen, um, I was laid off and literally, I kid you guys, I kid you not, a few hours after I was laid off, I, I, I'd say this was God, thank you God. <laughs> Um, and I had received an email on LinkedIn. And this is why I tell people to get LinkedIn as well too, especially if you're trying to make a career transition into the tech industry, or even if you're just in, trying to find a job anyways. The tech industry, like LinkedIn is a gold mine. Like every job I've ever received has come from LinkedIn and I never applied. Recruiters was literally hitting me up, banging down my, banging down my doors. Hey, are you looking for a job? Hey, we got this perfect job for you. Boom, 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 all those good things. But anywho, back to the topic. I was laid off and I literally had a job two weeks after I laid off that was paying me more money than I was making before. What industry do you, do you guys know where you can get laid off, have an interview lined up that day and have a job within the next two weeks? I'll wait. Comment below, as a matter of fact, comment below if you know a job where you can get laid off same day get an interview and have a job within in, within two weeks if you know an industry that allow you to do that comment below and i want to know and do not say mcdonald's or fast food or retail don't 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 do that to give me real careers that allows you or will give you the opportunity to do something like that and when just looking at something like that it's like why wouldn't I be into an industry where I can forever have a job? My skill is gonna always be marketable. And the thing about the tech industry, because technology is always advancing, you're gonna always have to constantly learn. You're gonna always have to learn new skills. And by you always having like sharpen your skills throughout time, this is what causes you have to, it, this is what makes you marketable because you always have to like grow as the times and technology grows. So that means you start making more money. <laughs> like it's literally like, the way the tech industry is built, it's like, if, if you're not probably making more money every year or two or getting like a huge, like where, if you're not getting like a huge increase, like you're doing something wrong. Like the way and how fast technology changes, bro. Like 
if you're not at least making six figures, you're doing something wrong. I'm sorry to tell you that even at entry level jobs, like as an entry level cybersecurity analyst, you're making about $80,000 per year. And that's average. So that's, if, depending on what company or how good you really are, easily you can get more money. You can easily get those sign-on bonuses. Like it, it, really make, it really makes it so much easier. So um, that's it with that. And also if you guys do want me to do a story time, just pretty much telling you guys everything um, that went through my complete journey within the tech industry, let me know, comment below, and um, I'll make sure I make that video for you. Also, before I do end this video, I do wanna let you guys know that I do have a Get Me In Cyber program. And which if everything that I pretty much said in this video sounds like interest of you, I have this program called Get Me In Cyber where we're pretty much gonna teach you guys the network fundamentals, the cybersecurity fundamentals, Linux administration, Splunk administration, Splunk fundamentals, um, cloud security as, as well as web application security. And not only are we gonna teach you these skills to actually land a job, we're gonna go into the career prep and then we're gonna teach you how to interview. We're gonna teach you how to negotiate these salaries. We're gonna teach you how to optimize your LinkedIn, LinkedIn so that you can re, um, receive job offers or even just see, uh, receive job interview. And then not to mention, um, also in this Get Me A Cyber program, you do once upon the completion of this, it will prepare you to take the CompTIA CYSA+, Plus, the CompTIA Security+, Plus, the Splunk Core User, as well as the Splunk Administration Certifications. Uh, we don't actually pay for those, but once you have taken that or taken the course or taken the program, it does prepare you for that. Uh, me personally, I don't know too many programs that give you all of this great things for that. Like, I don't get it. Um, so I'm gonna do something nice as well too. So if you guys did view this video and you watched it all the way through, um, use the coupon code YouTube and you're gonna get 25% off the entire program. Um, right now the program is priced at 169, so the 25% off, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not about to do the math, but it takes off a pretty chunk of it. Um, the link is gonna be in the description below, and also it's probably gonna be up here somewhere. So um, I really appreciate you guys for taking the time out to watch this video. Peace.